Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now this is the 10 minute chart of the Great British Pound and as you probably are most, most of you are aware we had a flash crash as they describe in the British Pound and you can see we've had a number of days to follow on that crash and you can see that the market is confirming the reality of this drop in the British Pound now I want to explain the dynamics of these types of drops and you have to understand just briefly to explain to you how traditional books work in the stock market they don't work that way in the currency markets but they're kind of parallel to that but in in stock markets you have uh, traditionally specialists who hold a book the book is supposed to be a secret book. Basically, it's a book that contains all of the buys and sells, and especially, uh, most importantly, the stop-loss orders of the people who uh, are trading in whatever currency, commodity, or stock you're talking about. And uh, those are not supposed to be visible by the other participants. So, in theory, uh, you have a market move in any kind of uh, index and stops will be triggered. Most of the stops are stop loss orders although they can be stop buys um, but for the most part stops on the downside are going to be stop loss orders so you might have a particular trader who says that if the British pound trades below 1.25, get me out. I'm long, but I don't want to be in anymore. Um, now, the way a stop loss order works is that as soon as the market trades below the stop loss price, then that market order is triggered. So when you have a fast market, a market where there are no bids, then you could have a stop loss here at 1.25 and it could be filled at 1.19 because it's going to be the first traded price after uh, it passes below that price. So you can see there's a built-in incentive when you have stop loss orders in markets to um, the term is pull their bits. So when there's going to be a major market move and there is collusion between the bidders then it's obviously in the interest of all the bidders of a particular stock commodity or currency to pull their bids and let it go no bid and that's exactly what happened with the British pound you can see that basically once it crossed below 1.26 it went no bid and you can see it went all the way down to uh, 1.195 now that wasn't the real price there were obviously buyers you can see that the price rebounded more than 50 percent and a lot of buyers came in but the people that had those buys on their book all were colluding together and this is the way people who trade in corrupt markets steal money from the little guys mostly it's the little guys that have stop loss orders so once all of the stop loss orders were triggered on the way down, uh, the people who bought from them, because remember they sold out at these low prices, once they'd all been cleared out, then the people who bought from them could rally the market, all come in and bid, and then get much, much higher prices. That's how rigged markets works. And that's, that's what we have, our rigged markets. So you can see, though, that the move in the British pound was legit. It is a downward move, and you can see it's still going down. Uh, looking at the long, long-term chart, you can see it's a very, very, very bearish chart here. Uh, the only other rival to this low is the Plaza Accords back in 1985 an amazingly long 22 years ago where you had any type of price action comparable to what we're at now. Now I wanted to show you the chart of the gold chart in the British pound because of course other things are reacting to it and you can see when we look at the monthly chart of gold in the British pound the first thing I want you to see here 
is the run-up to the financial crisis, which is this uh, little pennant here, and then the financial crisis itself, which is this pennant here. But pretty much the financial crisis was the beginning of a run-up in gold in the British pound. And it's fairly clear looking at this chart that the gold in the British pound uh, is in a bull market confirmed by this touch point. You can see that right there. And once again confirmed eight years later with a touch point right up here. So gold is still in a bull market in the British pound, probably most likely going to break out into a new high. Uh, I think for a number of reasons that the Great Britain is a forward indicator for what is going to happen to the rest of the nations. We know that if you look at the very, very long-term historical pattern of power and influence, it seems to be moving to an easterly location. It moved from Great Britain to the United States and then Japan became a power and now China is becoming a very, very large power. So Great Britain is on the far end of the declining power as the East begins to rise and it's not surprising to see Great Britain leading the way in this decline of the West. So here's an article from uh, CNN and Money talking about this flash crash and I just wanted to point something out here. Let's read a little bit of this. The British pound suffered a major, suffered a jarring flash crash on Friday, nosediving more than 6% against the dollar in a matter of minutes. The shock move in early trading in Asia left investors stunned and analysts blaming computerized trading programs for intensifying the dizzying drop. Well, I point out here, it's not computerized trading programs. It's collusion amongst the traders. It doesn't matter whether they're colluding using computers or colluding using paper books. It's collusion. Quote, it was just another quiet day in Asia and then bang, all the lights went red, said Matt Simpson, senior market analyst at Think Markets in Singapore. The pound had already sunk to a fresh 31-year low of around $1.26 on Thursday over deepening concerns that the UK split from the European Union will hurt the country's economy. Strategists had widely forecast it would go lower, but not as rap rapidly as it did on Friday. And uh, so I'm going to skip most of this. The pound has taken a beating this week after British Prime Minister Theresa May said Sunday that the UK would begin the formal process of leaving the EU by the end of March. Now, the speculation here is that the reason that the sell-off occurred was a comment from coming out of France that uh, the UK would be punished for leaving the euro. In other words, the tariffs would probably be applied to British traders if they're not a member of the, of the European Union. So it makes sense if you think about it that if the British exporters uh, are going to want to continue to compete uh, in in the international markets, then if the European uh, authorities are going to not give them the same rates on trade, then their currency has to go down. So I wanted to look at some of the economic indicators here to show you that, that Britain is a leader in the uh, type of devaluation and mess that we're going to have in the US next but uh, the rest of the world. So I pulled up a number of indicators here on trading economics here. The first one is the UK interest rate and you can see here that in essence the interest rates in the United Kingdom died at the financial crisis. They basically flatlined and you can see that they flatlined for a very long time. We're talking at nearly an eight year period, but you can see right there, if you look really closely, there's a new dip down, down towards zero, possibly into negative interest rates. 
Now this is a chart of the UK M3 money supply and you can see at the same time that we have this new move down in interest rates, we have this new move up in the UK money supply. This is the UK GDP annual growth rate and you can see that uh, although there was a massive drop with the financial crisis and then a recovery, that basically the downtrend is intact. So virtually all of the financial intervention that occurred based on the crisis it has, really, has really just continued the trend, which is a downward direction in GDP. And then the last two that we have here are the UK house price index and you can see that the UK house price index has made new highs after the financial crisis not significantly new highs but new highs it's beginning to turn down and then of course the last one is the UK FTSE index and you can see that the FTSE index seems to be poised to make new highs it's probably about 80 percent bet that the UK stock market will go into new highs based on the coming uh, the coming changes. So what does this all mean? Well, I personally believe that the UK is a leading indicator for the West. They are the leading empire of the last uh, the, the last situation the world was in and they're the, the leading empire in the, the decline of the current situation. So, so you can see that with gold at a thousand pounds, a thousand thirty three pounds per ounce, uh, that's not very far at all from the high of roughly thousand eighty six, we'll just say twelve hundred. Uh, gold is almost breaking into new highs in the British pound. There's nobody that can look at this chart and say that gold uh, went into a bear market. The only thing they can say is that the speed of the bull market was corrected and the bear market, uh, the bull market then resumed because we're about to break into new highs in, in gold in the British pound. Now, I expect this to follow in other currencies. Uh, the U.S. probably will be the last to fall, but you can see that the disastrous policies of zero interest rates, money printing, trade deficits, government spending, and uh, then currency devaluation ultimately are going to lead to much, much higher precious metals prices. And uh, that's the pound foolish uh, strategy of of the British and it will be followed in my opinion by the Americans it will ultimately fail and we'll talk to you next time